Hi friends, it's me, Miss Maria, and I'm at the Mount Airy branch of Carroll County Public Library. And I'm here today for Story Plus Sensory Bin, St. Patrick's Day. Oh my goodness, St. Patrick's Day. What color do you see all over here and all over me? Yeah, green. I have a lot of green on today for St. Patrick's Day. I have a green hat. I have a green shirt, I have a green tie, I have green everything. When we think of St. Patrick's Day, sometimes it's fun to look for green things or to make green food. Sometimes for my kiddos, I use food coloring to make green milk or maybe green eggs and ham because we love Dr. Seuss. What kind of fun things do you like to do for St. Patrick's Day? Oh, that sounds so cool. Well, today for Story Plus Sensory Bin, I'm gonna read one story. We're gonna play a quick game and then I'm gonna show you some ideas that you can make at home to make a St. Patrick's Sensory Bin all of your own. So let's get started with a book again with a lot of green. And this is called The Night Before St. Patrick's Day by Natasha Wing, illustrated by Amy Woomer. And this book might sound a little bit like The Night Before Christmas, but we'll see what you think. The Night Before St. Patrick's Day. And it was the night before St. Patrick's. And if you'll see, that's where we are right now. So we're just at the right place. It was the night before St. Patrick's, the day to wear green. Not a creature was stirring except Tim and Maureen. What kind of St. Patrick's Day things are they doing? They've got a hat, they have their shamrocks, they're hanging up decorations. Let's see. They decked out the den from ceiling to floor with streamers and rainbows and shamrocks galore. Later, they carefully made traps with gold charms and rings. I bet we catch a leprechaun with these shiny things. For if they caught one, so the legend was told, they'd find where he buried his pot of gold. So they're going to make a leprechaun trap. Sometimes in school, they do that for fun. They set all the traps around the room with great care in hopes that a wee Irishman soon would be theirs. Look at all those traps. Wow, do you see some things that might catch a leprechaun? Wow, look at all that. I wonder what's gonna happen. Do you think they're gonna catch one? I wonder. The children they'll then nestled all snug in their beds while visions of gold coins danced in their heads. We're gonna pause there because I'm not gonna tell you whether or not they catch a leprechaun with their leprechaun traps. You'll have to read the book to see. All right, friends. So while we are talking about leprechauns, I have a silly song that I would like to teach to you. It's called Sean the Leprechaun. And I will sing it once and then maybe you could try it with me the second time. Are you ready? So we need our eyes and our ears and our hands. And it goes like this. Sean, Sean the leprechaun danced through the forest with his green suit on. You can chase him all day long, but come too close and poof, he's gone. Do you want to try that with me one time? Okay, let's do this together. Ready? Remember how it starts? Yep. Sean, Sean the leprechaun danced through the forest with his green suit on. You can chase him all day long, but come too close and poof, he's gone. Very good, friends. Very nice. Maybe sometime you can do that with your grown-ups because finger plays and silly rhymes are always fun. Also, speaking of leprechauns, I have a game here with 
five pots of gold, and they're each different colors. And I think that maybe a leprechaun is hiding behind one of these pots. Will you help me find our missing leprechaun? That would be great. All right, so let's start. Leprechaun, leprechaun, you have run quite a lot. Are you behind the, what color is that? Good, red pot. See, you think the leprechaun's back there? No, okay, let's keep trying. Oh, next, I wonder if he's behind the green pot because green is very St. Patrick's Day-ish. Leprechaun, leprechaun, you have run quite a lot. Are you behind the green pot? I wonder. What? Not there. All right, friends, let's keep trying. Leprechaun, leprechaun, you have run quite a lot. Are you behind the blue pot? What do you think? Ready? Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. There's only two left. All right, friends. Leprechaun, leprechaun, you have run quite a lot. Are you behind the pink pot? Very good. And what? There's our leprechaun. Very nice job, friends. The leprechaun was behind the pink pot. And I love that game, grown-ups. You can play this missing game with anything. You can just maybe have three or four things that you, um, like anything, and hide something under one of those objects, and you can have your little one guess um, under which one the missing item is. It's really super fun to play, and little ones can trick you that way, too. All right, my friends. So last, and one of my favorite parts about these programs is talking about our sensory bin. And grown-ups, we love sensory bins um, as educators and librarians because not only are they super appealing, and to be honest with you, kids would love when we would have them in our story time rooms. Um, they're visually appealing, but they're also very educational. They are themed, and you can build them with things that you have at home. This one is my St. Patrick's Day one. And they're called sensory bins because they look visually appealing. Usually what's inside them are different materials that feel different. There might be different surfaces, things that might be soft or scratchy or um, shiny, things that will create different sounds when they're moved around. And as kids are learning with many senses, it wakes up the brain in so many wonderful ways and it creates a lot of important um, means for learning. Something else about sensory bins that I love is that there's no, um, it's an open-ended play. There's no goal that you're working towards. So kiddos can just play and use their imagination to their heart's content. So some ideas for a St. Patrick's Day sensory bin, if you can see, I just have some green, and this is Easter grass, which will be in lots of stores this time of year. I have um, just anything I could find that was green and some gold color, a couple little pots, which you could actually use styrofoam cups for this purpose if you wanted. Um, and I have some fun pretend gold coins, which are pretty, and then they also are fun to play with. But if you'll also notice, we have some manipulatives in here. We have some clothes pins, and we also have some pinchers because as kiddos play in these different surfaces, they can grab and use their hands and those fine motor skills that we love with the fingers so they can practice grabbing things. One fun thing to do in sensory bins is if you use a clothespin, if um, you have your little one practice grabbing something, for instance, now I grabbed a cotton ball and then drop it into a pot. Or if I grab a gold coin, and it's not always easy, it's kind of a fun challenge. Right now, I'm having a hard time grabbing onto a gold coin. But if you, if little one grabs onto a gold coin with their pincher, and then, I'm going to take this by hand, and then drop it into a pot, it makes a really neat sound. So there are different sights and sounds and different feels to explore in a sensory bin. Another cool idea I saw for a sensory bin um, for St. Patrick's Day is actually just using some Lucky Charms and just actually 
dumping a bunch out on a clean surface and having your kiddo separate either with a clothespin or with their, their pinching fingers, separate out the marshmallow flavors into different areas and colors. So there are so many things that you can put together at home to make a sensory bin for St. Patrick's Day or really any other theme that you come up with. I hope you have enjoyed today's Story Plus Sensory Bin. I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.